know Jane Rodriguez here, and I'm doing just, uh, I didn't plan on posting a video today because um, I've had a lot of major life changes going on, big time, and I'm sorting things out, and things are looking real good uh, for me and my girls. I will have, sometime soon, a nice announcement to make. But, so, forgive the appearance of this video, it's like nighttime out, and, um, I'm on the couch here, as you can see, and Ron Shaw just, uh, <laughs> he just messaged me, hi Ron Shaw, and a special shout out to JC Johnson, I've been working, um, the NRA boost, sign people up to the NRA, uh, the last, um, weekend, and it was very, very good, a lot of people showed up to uh, sign up for the memberships and then uh, also his sister uh, if you want to learn how to conceal and carry I can help you um, find people to do a class it's actually yeah all right so I've got an email to read I still have to address the Collins elite all right I'm gonna do that I didn't even plan on coming on here to tell you the truth but I wanted to because I know that people are waiting on me to uh, do my thing here. But it's been a freaking crazy, 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 <laughs> crazy month. Oh my gosh. Boy, things are looking really good. Okay, so. I just want to say hello to my friend, Jordan. Alright. Alright, so I look like a weird because of the contrast levels are so high but I had to otherwise I would look like a shadow man shadow woman let's see here so I'm going to read to you a email of an encounter I guess that happened two days ago uh, Mike let me if I can get in my account all right so this is Mike's encounter there we go so I will read it to you and then I'm gonna um, either after this or separate video I'm going to um, you can have one but don't swallow it okay it's very strong flavored talk about the uh, Collins Lee, but probably tomorrow when I have more time and I don't look like powder. Here you go, honey. It's really strong, okay? You can give one a lala if you want. Okay. Alright. Dear Jane, I rewrote these out. I think they're more clear. Feel free to share on your program if you wish. Uh, thank you. God bless Mike. At the time of my encounters in the wilderness, I was working as a paramilitary contractor. That's very interesting. This time was over a decade ago, so minor details may be hard for me to recall, but I will do my best. I was part of a 4-5 man team to prep camp for a training exercise that was being held near, near the Colorado-Oregon or border. The first night up there, it was just the members of the advanced team there. Intel in the area was that bears were unheard of, but mountain lions were there. Oh yeah. And becoming more common, but no not to the point that we were expecting to see any and cats will <laughs> straight up eat people <laughs> and the bad thing is i heard a story where a guy is changing his hire and a freaking mountain lion uh attacks him kills him and starts to eat him his friends come by to rescue him right and so the cats are you know how cats are speaking of cats here's taboo cats are very protective of their kill and they like to drag their meals up on trees and stuff <laughs> So when the friends started to like get the cat away from him, I think he was already done. He was still like munching on his meal. And then the cat was like pissed off and um, dragged the woman away by her, by her neck up a hill. <laughs> so cute. All right. Anyway, oh, she's very cuddly. So, Intel and blah, 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 blah. But, yeah. So, I don't remember any info on non-predators, but I'm sure there were deer and probably boar in the area. Oh, gosh. Those are very 
Can you dress? Yeah, I was sleeping in a small one-man dome tent, barely big enough to hold me. My head and feet were lightly touching the tent walls. I had it covered with camo panels and I placed a sheer sheet of clear plastic underneath the tent, which extended about eight inches or so beyond the tent walls. I did this due to the damp, drizzly weather on the ground was muddy and covered with pine needles. I felt okay with that since it was just a training mission in the field. I would normally not even use a tent, let alone a sheet of plastic. The plastic sheet was quickly covered in pine needles, making it invisible. The terrain was forest. Lots of trees, and as I said, lots of pine needles on the ground and large mossy boulders there, here and there, between the trees. My tent, after I camouflaged it, just looked like one of these boulders, but a few people that were there did not make our individual camps real close together. I mean, we were probably not more than 200 feet apart, but due to the heavily wooded terrain, completely out of sight of each other. So we were running 24-hour watch, so when it was my turn of watch was up, it was the middle of the night when it was my turn. Sorry, right now kind of funny, but it was his turn and it was in the middle of the night. I found my tent with difficulty. Great camo job. It's <laughs> good. Um, found my tent with difficulty and fell right to sleep. Sometime after falling asleep, I was woken from my sleep by the sound of something stopping on the sheet of plastic right by my head. This thing's foot and my head couldn't have been more than a foot apart with just the wall of the tent between us. Within a few seconds of that, I heard two very strong nostril whiffs. Something with huge nostrils was smelling me. Nostrils were a few inches from my ear. These nostrils were definitely larger than man's size. Now, at the time, I didn't believe in Bigfoot and had never heard of Dogman, so I slept with a loaded um, 45 pistol on my right hip and a marine kabar knife on my left hip, and I was very well trained in the use of them, so I wasn't scared in the least. I was, however, very tired, so I just closed my eyes and went back to sleep. Looking back, when it removed its foot, I would have made the same noise. Never heard that noise, so it was still there when I fell back to sleep, I assumed. Next day, I looked around a bit for tracks, but there were none. Asked around the morning fire who was snooping around, but everyone denied it, so I kind of put it out of my mind. I didn't fit in anything to reality in my mind at the time, so I just pushed it out. Um, it wasn't until years later when a friend started sending me tons of stories of Bigfoot encounters that I not started noticing similarities to many of them in aspects of my strange encounter. If it was bear country, I would just say it was a bear and be done with it, but apparently they aren't heard of in that area, so a deer or hog would have been able to put this nose mountain lion could have but the masters were huge couldn't have been a could have been a lion but it would have would have to be bigger than any of the one i heard of so the interesting thing about not having tracks though is that uh, he has another story to this but i, I want to say real quick that um i know that tv will promote the idea that bigfoot is um it has to fit our little reality box of how we know reality to be and so it has to always be a flesh and blood creature um but the the reality of the matter is um it just doesn't make sense if a 15 foot tall some of them are that tall always is existing in a physical manner in the woods you, it's just, it's going to be found okay i don't i know that there are hundreds millions of acres of woods in the united states but if there's more than one of us that are over eight feet tall and they're breeding and hunting we would have more physical evidence but the thing is it's just exactly to the t exactly like how the native americans have described them where they are going in and out of physical reality and then there's the other thing that de demonic entities do sometimes pretend to be Bigfoot because some demons are very strong um, very strong there's levels of demons hierarchies there's hierarchies of angels so the disembodied fallen angels their spirits souls are demons and some of them started out as a higher ranking angel before they fell so therefore they have more power to do this and that um, but that's my point and they can do a lot more than you most not you but I, most people give them credit for um and of course on mainstream tv they're not gonna uh, acknowledge because it is an active conspiracy to cover up the facts because if you start answering these questions 
And admitting this, then you have to do to the root, and the root will end up being um, that it's uh, the Christian Bible is true. So, um, yeah. If you don't like my Christianity message, then you can just scoot along, and I don't need you. But if you're interested, I know that's so mean of me. How dare I? Oh, how dare I say that? But that's what I believe, and that's what I know intellectually and logically, because I, I've researched the heck out of this. Uh, but anyway, I'll read Mike's uh, part two tomorrow, and I'll also make a special Collins Elite thing. I just wanted to say hi and kind of like, um, you know, keep y'all informed. I thank each and every one of my subscribers uh, who give me feedback and comments and those who just watch and pray. I pray for you and let's get in this together and find some answers. And if you do want to support me, go ahead and give me a, an email if you want to I'll make a donation. Or if you want me to sponsor a product, I will do that. There's people who have been uh, trading goods and services with me for my information and what I can do gun wise and stuff so um, just remember we're in this together if we want to make a true change in our world and I mean it like a real change a real revolution it starts with people like you and me and it can and does happen and will so let's get together God bless you bye